The main character, Cha Jong Won, was the deputy director of security for a certain region of Korea. Although he was introduced briefly, it quickly became clear that John Wan was smart, resourceful, and loyal, his priority being the well-being of John Beck, a presidential candidate who was also the Secretary of Security. As a reward for his loyalty, John Beck gifted John Wan and all expenses paid vacation so he could spend time with his daughter. Beck was leading the polls for the presidency, but the election was still uncertain. Later, Yan Wan and his young daughter, Kyung Min, headed to the airport, but first made a stop to refuel at a gas station run by a suspicious-looking attendant. John Wan, sensing something wasn't right, decided to pay the station owner directly upon returning from his trip. The audience is then introduced to other key characters, a semi-professional golfer and her sister, who missed their flight because of expired passports, and an elderly couple who just wanted to get home after a long trip. Coincidentally, on that very day, a thick mist appeared, making driving difficult. One reckless driver in a sports car, speeding like a maniac, caused a major accident on the suspension bridge. The elderly couple's bus, the golfer's car, and even a suspicious convoy transporting a guarded armored box were all involved in the crash. As a result, even John Won's car got caught in the chaos. He stepped out to assess the situation and found two soldiers guarding a man who seemed important. The man ordered the soldiers to check the status of the armored box, and upon doing so, they discovered that the box had been opened and one of their comrades was dead. To avoid causing a panic, the soldiers cut off all communication with the outside world. Meanwhile, John Won's daughter, Kyung Min, wandered off and found a dog bumping its head against the bridge. The dog's tag read E9. As Kyung Min approached, her father stopped her just in time, revealing that there were dozens of dogs like E9 inside the armored box. John Wan demanded answers from the soldiers, but they refused to explain. It was then that a scientist in charge of the dogs initiated Project Silence, ordering the dogs to attack a single target, a soldier. An epic struggle ensued as the dogs followed their command, but the order was canceled just before they could harm anyone else. The dogs were placed back inside the armored box, where they reverted to their calm, docile state. Just when things seemed under control, a helicopter arrived to transport the dogs, lowering another armored box to collect them. However, one of the dogs, E9, had managed to remove its control chip and sneak aboard the helicopter. Once on board, E9 attacked the soldiers, causing the helicopter to crash onto the upper part of the bridge. As if things couldn't get worse, the control system malfunctioned, turning all 116 people on the bridge into targets for the now rogue dogs. John Wan, his daughter, and the scientist managed to escape in their car. Along the way, they saved the gas station attendant, who had been caught in the chaos. Meanwhile, the other survivors took refuge inside the elderly couple's bus. But John Wan's escape was cut short when debris from the helicopter blocked their path, causing their car to crash. At this point, the scientist explained the full extent of the project. He had initially developed the dogs to help with rescue missions, but the military had repurposed them to follow any order, including lethal attacks. The experiment had gone wrong, and the dogs, now uncontrollable, were supposed to be destroyed. However, they were now the ones destroying everything in their path. John Wan managed to contact John Beck, informing him of the disaster on the bridge. Beck revealed that the project was indeed tied to their operations, and although they hadn't yet taken office, the Blue House, the presidential office, had already approved the project. This meant they were deeply involved in the mess. Meanwhile, the bus carrying the elderly couple approached John Wan's location just in time, saving him and his daughter from a tanker leaking toxic waste. But things went from bad to worse when the helicopter explosion caused the bridge to partially collapse, leaving the survivors stranded. Trying to calm the group, John Wan revealed his position as part of the Blue House Committee and assured everyone that help was on the way. To avoid a bigger panic, he lied about the dogs, telling the group they were rabid. Minutes later, a rescue team arrived, evacuating the survivors from the bus. However, things took a deadly turn when the dogs attacked again. Wiping out the rescue team and injuring the elderly woman, the golfer's sister, and John Wan himself. Fortunately, none of them died. The scientists then revealed another key detail. All the dogs on the bridge were clones of E9, the rogue dog that had removed its control chip. Unfortunately, after a brief but intense struggle, the elderly woman succumbed to her injuries. Her husband, having no will to continue without her, chose to stay by her side and used his final moments to hold the hatch closed, keeping the dogs out. Meanwhile, the rest of the group made it to the edge of the bridge, but the promised rescue was nowhere to be found. At this point, the scientist asked John Wan, who he had been communicating with on the radio. When John told him it was John Beck, the scientist dropped a bombshell. The Silence Project had actually been Beck's idea, and it was the creation of this project that had given him the political leverage to run for president. John Wan, feeling utterly betrayed, decided to confront Beck. 
Even though Beck remained silent, John Juan announced that he was going to lead the remaining survivors to Seoul, and if they made it, he would expose the entire truth to the press, regardless of the political fallout. The new plan was to retrieve the scientist's laptop to reactivate the dog's targeting system, this time targeting John Wan himself. He would lock himself in a containment cage while the gas station attendant used a crane to lift the cage and move him to safety. The golfer, using her impressive skills, managed to shatter the windshield of a truck by hitting golf balls, sending the dog straight toward the cage. However, things got complicated when the bridge collapsed further, sending most of the dogs into the water and leaving John Wan hanging on the edge of the bridge. In a moment of bravery, Kyung Min jumped and hooked the cage, allowing the gas station attendant to pull them across the toxic gases and towards Seoul, where emergency personnel and even John Bayek were waiting for them. Without hesitation, John Wan confronted his boss, accusing him of being responsible for everything that had happened and stating that all the evidence was on the scientist's laptop. The final scene showed that E9 had made it to shore along with one of her clones. As she gazed at the ruined bridge from afar, the audience was left wondering if her thirst for revenge had truly been quenched. And so the story came to an epic conclusion. Wow, what a thrilling ride. It was an incredible journey from start to finish, full of tension and surprises. Honestly, this movie had been recommended by several content creators, and after watching it for myself, I can confidently say that it's a must-watch. It's entertaining from start to finish and never gets boring. In my opinion, it's a perfect popcorn movie. But that's just what I thought. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I promise to read them. I've shared this story with you. Now it's your turn. Don't forget to like and subscribe.